What's up, it's Susie from Hey Grill Hey, and today I'm gonna walk you through charcoal grilling 101. We're gonna cover the different types of charcoal, some really great methods to light your charcoal, and then how to set up your basic charcoal grill to get the exact results you want at home. If you've never grilled with charcoal before, you're gonna feel like an absolute pro by the end of this video. And if you're already a charcoal pro, hopefully you can pick up at least a couple new tips that'll help you improve your backyard barbecue game. Let's do it. Let's jump right in by talking about what charcoal is. So charcoal is essentially wood that has already been cooked past the point of having any moisture, anything left in there. The beauty of charcoal is that it holds temperature for a really long time. So if you were to just light wood, it'll burn really quickly, it'll burn really hot, but then you know, like when you're cooking over a campfire and you've got s'mores to make, you know the best time to make s'mores is when that wood has burned down into coals. Now you're starting at that point with charcoal and that's what makes it such a great tool for cooking because you're starting at that best point where the temperature's even, it's easiest to control and you still get a lot of that delicious wood fired flavor. Now there are two main types of charcoal that you can buy at most grocery stores for backyard cooking. We've got the classic briquettes. Now this is coal that has been broken down into a really fine powder and then compressed into a specific shape. Briquettes are great if you want a really consistent temperature profile. They tend to hold heat for a little bit longer than other types of charcoal, and they have a pretty mild, smoky flavor. I think briquettes are incredibly versatile. You can use them for hot and fast grilling, low and slow cooking. If you want more wood flavor, you can add in wood chips or some companies actually sell briquettes with wood chips infused into the briquettes themselves. Within the world of briquettes, there are several variations that you can buy because they're so common. There's a lot of different options and I don't want you to be confused or overwhelmed when you go to grab a bag of briquettes. Now this is like a classic Kingsford original. You can find these everywhere. Some of the variations that you'll find include flavored briquettes. So they'll include oils or something, an additive that's like onion or herbs or garlic. I think those are a little bit gimmicky. They smell really great while they're burning, but they don't actually add anything to the flavor of your food. I would skip those. Other variations include match light, which are basically you can light them with a match. You don't need a charcoal chimney. You don't need any additional starters. I like to grab the match light when I'm taking them like up the mountain or I'm gonna build a fire pit and cook that way. And I don't wanna haul any extra tools or starting equipment. I don't generally use them for my backyard, however. So the match light charcoal tends to be infused with a lighter fluid to make it light really quickly. Uh, a lot of people complain that when you're using lighter fluid or a chemical assist to start your charcoal, that it puts an off-putting smell or even flavor into your food. Another couple options that you sometimes will quickly see, but there might be a little bit more obscure, are briquettes that actually have wood chips or chunks already infused into the briquettes themselves. That adds a little extra layer of wood-fired smoky flavor to whatever you're cooking. They tend to run a slightly higher price tag though. For me, I just stick with standard briquettes, and then if I wanna add in that smoky flavor, I'll just sprinkle on some wood chips. The last thing that I wanna talk about with briquettes is I want you to look at the bag. Um, some charcoal briquettes use additives to help them stay together. Some of them do not. If that's something that's important to you, what you're cooking with and what you're using for fuel, check the back of the bag. Some of them are really clean. It's literally just compressed wood. Others use like binders, cement binders to help these briquettes stay together. Next, let's move on to lump charcoal. This is becoming more and more commonplace. If you can't find it at like your grocery store, you'll at least be able to find it at big box hardware. This is whole pieces of wood that have been burned down and broken up into pieces and put in the bag. Now you can tell even just here, we have a lot of variation in size and shape. Uh, you can guess that means that you're gonna have some variation in your overall temperature. Lump does get a bit hotter. So if you're grilling hot and fast, Lump charcoal is kind of my favorite way to go. I also believe that lump charcoal puts out a little bit more of that traditional wood fired flavor because it's all wood, 100% all the time. Lump charcoal does tend to run a little bit pricier than briquettes in most cases. So if budget's part of your concern, that's something to consider. Another thing about lump charcoal is there are variations here as well. So you can actually buy some lump charcoal that's a specific species of wood. So you can buy an entire bag of mesquite lump charcoal, which will give you a really rich, robust wood smoky flavor. So quickly sum it up. Briquettes, 
great for all around everyday grilling, holds heat really consistently, great for grilling or smoking if you wanted to go something low and slow. Lump briquettes, pure wood, more wood flavor, cooks really great at high temperatures, slightly more inconsistent in your overall temperature than you'd see in briquettes. I personally use both for a lot of different applications. I like having the options available for my charcoal cooking. If you're brand new, I recommend picking up a bag of each and as you really start getting into charcoal cooking, try both. I'm certain you'll find your favorite as well. There are also some new fun types of charcoal on the market that I've been seeing come out, which is kind of cool. I've been seeing nutshells used as charcoal. I've been seeing coconut used as charcoal. Uh, there are a lot of cool options on the market. Each of them have different benefits. Of course, those more unique types of charcoal are gonna run a higher price tag. And a lot of times you'll have to order them online versus being able to find them just generally in the grocery store or in your big box hardware store but they can be fun to play with as you get more and more into charcoal grilling. Now that we've covered what charcoal is, let's talk about lighting it up. My favorite tool for getting my charcoal lit is a charcoal chimney. Now you do need to plan ahead when you're cooking with charcoal. I like to give myself at least 20, if not up to 30 minutes to let my charcoal fully preheat before I even think about cooking on it. Now this is a little bit longer than it would be if you were say preheating your oven, but not much. If you're gonna be baking, if you're gonna be cooking on your stove, you know you have to preheat things anyway, so just build that time into preparing your charcoal and you'll be good to go. Charcoal chimneys are great because lighting charcoal and maintaining heat is all about airflow. Charcoal chimneys are designed to bring in air through the bottom, light the charcoal that's sitting inside of the chimney, create kind of a vortex so it lights evenly all the way throughout. Once you add your charcoal to your chimney, you can light it in a bunch of different ways. When I first started out, I just bunched up a bunch of newspaper and shoved it under there, lit it with a lighter, and it was good to go. If you just look up charcoal fire starters, you'll find a ton of options at a really affordable price. I'll link a couple of my favorites in the video description. I also have a grill that has a propane assist for lighting my charcoal. This Weber Performer has a small propane bottle with a torch inside, you can skip the chimney, pile the charcoal on top of that, let the propane run until the charcoal is ignited. I've also seen a ton of hacks out there. I don't know if you guys have seen some of these. You put Doritos in your charcoal and light them on fire. You put uh, egg cartons filled with bacon grease in there. There are a lot of different tips and tricks to really just start and hold a fire, but that's honestly all you need to do. It's gotta have airflow around it. You have to have a long, consistent source of flame to ignite the charcoal, and then once the inside starts to catch, it'll begin to catch all of those around it. The most important thing here, like I said in the beginning, is just give it enough time, a good 15 to 20 minutes until your charcoal is starting to ash over on the outside. You're not seeing billowing smoke anymore, but more of a clean burn. Oftentimes you'll see flames coming across the top of your charcoal in your chimney. That means it's ready to dump and set up for your cook. Once your charcoal is preheated, you need to dump it into your grill, and this is a really important step for charcoal grilling. How you place your charcoal will make you master of the flame. You won't have to worry about burning things. You won't have to worry about undercooking things. You won't have to worry about flare-ups or any of that nonsense. You will have full control over your fire. My favorite way for setting up a charcoal grill is using two zone heat. That means one half of the grill has an entire pile of banked charcoal. The other half has no charcoal at all. This banked side of hot charcoal is gonna be what we call the direct heat side of your grill. Anything you put over there is going to sear hot and fast. You're gonna get crispy edges, you're gonna get grill marks, you're gonna get char on the outside of your grill. The other side where there is no charcoal means there's no heat. That's your indirect heat side of your grill. So if you're cooking things that are thick or gonna take a long time, you wanna start them on the indirect heat side of your grill. Let them slowly come up in temperature. When they're close to your finished temperature, then you move them over to the high heat. That way you get an even cook throughout you get that crispy, crunchy sear on the middle and it's the best of both worlds. Another great thing about this setup is that you have a range of temperature from high to low and right in the middle you have this sweet medium spot. So if you wanted to keep things in the middle and just keep them moving, you can almost get a rotisserie effect with that nice medium heat right down the center of your grill. Another way to set up your grill, which I use less frequently but I still do on occasion, is just direct heat 
all the way. I do a nice even layer of coals across the bottom. I usually do this when I have a lot to grill at once. So if I'm doing chicken wings, if I'm doing hamburgers, I know I'm gonna be battling flare ups a little bit because there's nowhere to escape. <laughs> there's just charcoal underneath, there's no cool zone. Uh, I only do this if I plan on standing next to my grill, not leaving and cooking things really quickly in a large quantity. Now you can count on a nice chimney of charcoal lasting you for a whole cook. I would say from the preheating time of 20 to 30 minutes to the cook time at full airflow, full temperature, you probably have another 30 to 60 minutes depending on how much charcoal you've put in your grill. That should be plenty of time to cook some steaks, cook some burgers, you know, get your dinner done and off the grill. You can extend the life of your charcoal by cooking at lower temperatures. And this is the last thing that I wanna to talk to you about with charcoal grilling. It's all about airflow. So once your charcoal's preheated, it's in your grill, then we need to manage the airflow. Most charcoal grills have vents on the bottom and the top. More airflow means more heat. Your charcoal is gonna burn hotter and it's gonna burn faster. If you wanna drop the temperature lower, you're gonna close those vents. I find if I'm doing two zone grilling, my vents are about halfway open on the bottom and the top. I'll usually be running anywhere between 275 and 325 within the grill itself. If they're all the way open, you're looking at 400 plus degrees, which is great for searing and high temperature grilling. Low and slow smoking with charcoal on a kettle grill like this is a totally different process, but if you want that information or if you wanna see a video on that, let me know in the comment section below. We can totally put one together for you, but I wanted to keep this charcoal 101 just about getting it lit, getting your grill going, and getting ready to cook your first thing on your charcoal grill. The last thing that I wanna to touch on is charcoal safety. And this is a really, really important part of charcoal grilling. And honestly, I think the fire management is a reason why a lot of people are intimidated by charcoal grilling, but you don't have to be, it can be very easy. Once you're done cooking, what you wanna do is close your vents completely. Shutting off the airflow is going to kill the fire in your grill. Your charcoal will slowly come down in temperature as it burns through all of the oxygen within the grill itself the fire will extinguish, and then it'll take time for your charcoal to completely cool down. Now, most people run into this error where at the end of the night, they go grab their charcoal and maybe they just dump it in their garbage can. It can take at least 24 hours for your charcoal to fully extinguish. I don't recommend moving your charcoal from your grill at all until at least the next night. It's nice because you don't have to clean up right away, but you do have to set an alarm on your phone so you remember Go clean out your charcoal grill or clean it out next time before you get ready to cook. What you do not want to do is move any coals that might even be a touch warm into a garbage can or roll your grill into your garage. Leave it outside, leave the vents closed and let it come all the way down. Coals even hours and hours and hours later can reignite if the conditions are right. So just keep them in your grill, don't worry about them for a while and then you can clean it up later. One purchase I do recommend making when you're getting into charcoal grilling just for your own peace of mind is a nice place to keep all of your ashes. Then you don't have to worry about where you're going to dump them. I have a galvanized garbage pail with a lid. That's airtight. I can dump all of my coals into there even if they're still warm to hot and I don't have to worry about it melting anything. I don't have to worry about anything catching on fire. I leave it outside until it's completely cool and then I can just build up the ash over time so I'm not even dumping it maybe once a month and it gives me a really safe place to keep my ashes and awesome peace of mind. Now you know the basics. I think you're ready to kick things off and start charcoal grilling at home in your very own backyard. If you need inspiration or recipes or tips and tricks, my website has hundreds of recipes and I will tell you if you're using indirect heat or direct heat. And now that you know what those mean, you can cook every recipe on my website. I'm also here to help you. So if you have questions, if you wanna see additional informational videos, message me on Instagram, leave a comment on the video below. I do read them. I try to respond to as many as I possibly can because I wanna help you make better barbecue so you can feed the people you love and become a backyard barbecue hero. See you next time.